Hello and welcome to the OWC instructional series of videos. In this installment, we'll be upgrading the hard drives in a 2011 and 2012 Mac Mini server. For this video, we'll be using the 2011 Mini, but the instructions for the 2012 model are identical. We've already backed up our data to an external drive, shut down, unplugged, and have placed the Mini on a soft, static-free work surface. We are now ready to begin. The first step is to flip the Mac Mini over. Rotate the bottom cover counterclockwise until the two white dots are aligned. You can then gently lift the cover off. The memory modules are located here. To remove them, gently pull outward on the retaining clips until the top module pops up. Then, gently pull the module straight out. Repeat the process for the lower module. Next, use your Torx T6 screwdriver to loosen these three screws that hold the fan in place. Once you've done that, gently lift the fan up and to the side to reveal the fan connector. Use your nylon pry tool to gently lift up on the connector to detach it from the logic board. You may then set the fan aside. Next, we need to remove this cowling. Detach this screw near the bottom, then gently slide the cowling out and set it aside. Next, remove these three 2mm hex screws. If you don't have a hex wrench, you can use your Torx T8 to do the job. If you do, use a light touch to avoid stripping the screws. Once you've done that, you can use your Torx T8 screwdriver to remove these two screws holding the hard drive to the airport antenna grate. Gently slide the antenna grate out and hold it off to the side. The airport cable is attached at this point and can gently be pulled free. You can then set the antenna grate aside. Remove this screw near the rear of the logic board with your Torx T6 screwdriver. Next. Use your nylon pry tool to gently lift both the SATA connectors straight up. Then, do the same with the IR board connector. Slide two thin screwdrivers into these two holes. Then, gently pull back on the screwdrivers to slide the logic board toward the back of the Mini. That will give you enough room to disconnect the power supply connector from the logic board. You should then be able to remove the logic board completely. You can simply reach in and pull the first hard drive out of the Mini. The second drive requires a little more disassembly. First, use your Torx T6 screwdriver to remove the screw holding the power supply in place. Next, slide the small retaining clip out from under the socket, then rotate the power socket itself 90 degrees counterclockwise. You can then slide the power supply out of the Mini. Use your Torx T6 screwdriver to remove the last screw holding the second drive carrier in place. Once you've done that, you can lift the carrier up and out of the Mini. We'll need to remove some hardware from the old drive so we can reuse it on the new ones. Use your Torx T8 screwdriver to remove these four mounting screws. You should then be able to remove the drive from the carrier. Next, slide the SATA cable off of the drive. We'll need to peel these two anti-static pads off the bottom of the drive, as well as the two smaller ones on the top. We can install either standard 2.5 inch SATA hard drives or solid state drives in the Mac Mini server. For this installation, we'll be installing a pair of OWC Mercury Extreme Pro 6G SSDs. 
Take the drive that you wish to install in the second bay and attach the anti-static pads we just removed in the same positions as they were on the original drive. There should be enough residual adhesive to allow them to stick. Next, line up the connector on the SATA cable with the connector on the drive and slide the two together. Set the drive on your work surface as shown and place the carrier over the top. Then, attach the drive to the carrier using the four mounting screws. Slide the carrier unit back into the Mac Mini. Then replace the Torx T6 screw to secure it in place. Next, slide the power supply back into place and make sure it's seated squarely. This may take a little maneuvering to seat properly. Then replace the Torx T6 screw to secure it in place. Place the power socket back into position and rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. Then, slide the retainer clip back in to hold it in place. Now onto the drive for the first bay. First, remove the SATA connector from the original drive by simply sliding it off. Next, remove these two mounting pins by using your Torx T8 screwdriver. If you're installing a standard hard drive in this bay, you'll also want to gently peel off the black plastic cover on the old drive to put on the new one as it covers an exposed circuit board. If you're installing an SSD in this bay, you can skip this step since there's no exposed circuitry to cover. Line up the SATA connector on the new drive with the cable's connection and slide the two together. Next, attach the two mounting pins in these two spots. We can now install the drive in the Mac Mini. The two mounting pins on the drive will need to go into these two gaskets. It may take a little maneuvering to seat the drive correctly. Once the drive is seated, you can slide the logic board about two-thirds of the way back into the Mini. The power cable plugs into this slot. Line the slot and the connector up and push the logic board forward until you can plug the two together. You can now slide the logic board all the way in, pushing the two tabs along the rear edge if necessary. Reconnect the SATA cables and the IR connector by lining them up over the respective slots on the logic board and gently snapping them into place. Then, reattach the Torx T6 screw near the rear of the logic board. To reattach the connector on the airport antenna to the connector on the board, simply line them up and press them together. Slide the antenna grate back into place and maneuver it so it sits flush. Attach the two Torx T8 screws that hold the hard drive to the grate. Then, reattach the three hex screws around the edge. Again, if you're using your Torx T8 screwdriver to do this, you need to be extremely careful not to tighten them too hard or you'll strip the screws. Slide the cowling back into place and reattach the screw that held it in. Reattach the fan cable to its connector on the logic board. Set the fan into place. And tighten the three screws that hold it in. You may now replace the memory. The notches on the memory modules line up with the pins in the memory slots. Place the first module into the lower slot at about a 40 degree angle until it's fully seated. Then, push down on the outer edge to lock it into place. Repeat the process for the top module. 
put the bottom cover onto the Mini, making sure that the white dots line up. Then, rotate the bottom cover clockwise until the black and white dots are aligned. You may now flip your Mini over, hook it back up, and turn it on.